But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There is required to seeking God a previous sense of a wanting, lost condition in ourselves by a distance from God. No man designs to come to God, but it is for relief, satisfaction, and rest. It must be out of an apprehension that he is yet at such a distance from God as not to be capable of relief or rest from him, and that in this distance he is in a condition indigent and miserable, as also that there is relief and rest for him in God. Without these apprehensions, no man will ever engage in a design to come to God, as having no reason for it nor end in it. And this can be wrought in none sincerely but by faith. All other powers and faculties in the souls of men without faith do incline and direct them to look for rest and satisfaction in themselves. This is the highest notion of those philosophers who raise human wisdom into an admiration, namely the Stoics that everyone was to seek for all rest and satisfaction in himself and in nothing else. And so they came at length expressly to make every man a god to himself. Faith alone is the gracious power which takes us off from all confidence in ourselves and directs us to look for all in another, that is, in God himself. And therefore it must see that in God which is suited to give relief in this condition, and this is contained in the object of it, as here proposed, as we shall see. Secondly, there must before this also be some encouragement given to him that will come to God, and that from God himself. A discovery of our wants, indigence, and misery makes it necessary that we should do so, but it gives no encouragement so to do, for it is accompanied with the discovery of our unworthiness so to do, and be accepted in doing it. And his glorious excellencies, absolutely. Nor is that anywhere in the scriptures, absolutely and in the first place, proposed for our encouragement. This, therefore, can be nothing but his free, gracious promise to receive them that come to him in a due manner. That is, by Christ, as the whole scripture testifies. For what some pretend concerning coming to God by encouragements, taken from general notions of his nature, and his works of creation and providence without any promise, is an empty speculation, nor can they give any single instance of any one person that ever came to God and found acceptance with him without the encouragement of divine revelation which has in it the nature of a promise. Faith, therefore, is necessary to this coming to God because by this alone we receive, lay hold of, embrace the promises, and are made partakers of them, which the Apostle not only expressly affirms, but makes it his design to prove in a great part of the chapter, as we shall see. There is nothing, therefore, more fond, more foreign to the Apostle's intention than what is here ignorantly and weakly by some pretended, namely, that faith here is nothing but an assent to the truth of the being of God, and his distribution of rewards and punishments, without any respect to the promise that is, to Christ and his mediation, as will yet further appear. Therefore, to come to God is to have an access into his favor, to please God, as did Enoch. So to come is to be accepted with him. There may be a coming to God without our duties and services, as Cain did, when we are not accepted. But the apostle treats in this place only of an access with acceptance into his grace and favor as is manifest from his instance, his design and argument. For those that have this design, it is their duty to believe. This is the only way and means of attaining that end. Whence believing itself is often called coming to God or coming to Christ. Isaiah 55, 1 and verse 3, John six thirty seven and verse 44, John seven thirty seven. And it is by faith alone that we have an access into this grace, Romans 5, 2, that is, whereby we thus come to God, number 4. The object of this faith, or what in this case we ought to believe, is twofold. First, the being of God, 
believe that he is, and to his office, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The first thing to be believed is that God is. The expression seems to be imperfect, and something more is intended than the divine being absolutely as his God. The schoolmen and a number of expositors on the place as Catherinus, Salmeron, Tina, and so on, dispute earnestly how the being of God, which is the object of natural science, seeing it may be known by the light of reason, can be proposed as the object of faith, which respects only things unseen and evident supernatural, made known by revelation only. And many distinctions they apply to the solution of this difficulty. For my part, I no way doubt, but the same thing, or a number may on a number of respects, be the object of reason and faith also. So is it when that which is consistent with reason, and in general discoverable by it, is the creation of the world, is more distinctly and clearly proposed to faith by divine revelation, which does not destroy the former assent on principles of reason, but confirms the mind in the persuasion of the same truth by a new evidence given to it, But the Apostle speaks not here of any such assent to the truth of the being and existence of God as may be attained by reason or the light of nature, but that which is the pure object of faith, which the light of reason can no way reach to. For that he treats of such things only is evident from the description which he premises of the nature of faith, namely, that it is the evidence of things not seen. And it is such a believing of the being of God as gives encouragement to come to him, that we who are sinners may find favor and acceptance with him. And that apprehension which men may have of the being of God by the light of nature, yea, and of his being a rewarder, Cain had, as we have showed, and yet he had no share in that faith which the apostle here requires. Therefore it is evident from the context, the circumstances of the subject matter treated on, and the design of the apostle, that the being or existence of God proposed as the object of our faith, to be believed in the way of duty, is a divine nature with its glorious properties or perfections, as engaged in acting themselves in a way of giving rest, satisfaction, and blessedness to them that come to him. The second thing which, in order to the same end of acceptance with God, we are required to believe is that he is or will be a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That is, he will act in all things towards him suitably to the proposal which he makes of himself to faith, when he says, I am, and I am God Almighty, or the like. Two things may be considered in this object of faith. First, the assertion of the truth itself, God is a rewarder, Secondly, the limitation of the exercise of that property as to its object, unto them that diligently seek him. And this limitation wholly excludes the general notion of believing in rewards and punishments from God, present and future, from being here intended. For it is confined only to the goodness and bounty of God towards believers, those that seek him. His dealing with them is not exactly according to distributive justice with respect to themselves, but in a way of mercy, grace, and bounty. For the reward is of grace and not of works. That which these words of the Apostle have respect to, and which is the ground of the faith here required, is contained in the revelation that God made of himself to Abraham. Genesis 15.1 Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. God is so a rewarder to them that seek him as that he himself is their reward, which eternally excludes all thoughts of merit in them that are so rewarded. Who can merit God to be his reward? Rewarding in God, especially where he himself is a reward, is an act of infinite grace and bounty. And this gives us full direction to the object of faith here intended, namely, God in Christ is revealed in the promise of him, given himself to believers as a reward to be their God, in a way of infinite goodness and bounty. The proposal of this is that alone which gives encouragement to come to him, which the apostle designs to declare. It is the most proper act of faith to come and cleave to God as a rewarder in the way of grace and bounty, as proposing himself for our reward. 
that faith is vain which does not put men on a diligent inquiry after God. The whole issue of our finding of God when we seek Him depends on the way and rule which we take and use in our so doing.